Um, all I can do is show up and write and and see. That's my job. I'd say earliest memory of music is probably um, watching things like Aladdin and stuff like that and Disney and singing away to them tunes. It's funny now because I've been watching a lot of TV, a lot of Disney Channel TV with my daughter since the lockdown and like they're singing the exact same tunes I was singing when I was that age. Where you have the Lion King theme tune, you have um, the Aladdin theme tune. They've got a couple of new ones now. They've been... Um, Another one. Sean's cheap, I can get behind. Um, I remember my mother had a CD in the car. I think it was, I think every every mother in Ireland had it at one stage. Um, a Woman's Heart. It was like the the biggest tune back then. Um, another tune, Sunny Don't Go Away. I, I, know, I know the artist, but Everyone knows the tune, and everybody everybody had a father who was either working or fishing or farming, so it was a very kind of. Well, I I always loved pop music. I remember myself and my sister. Um, we got the, we went to see the Spice Girls movie back in the day, and she got the Spice Girls tape album for her birthday. This is oh, how many years ago was the Spice Girls? It was like the first tape the house had seen, and uh, we spent the whole. I'd say a month, just rewinding the tape and playing it again, and rewinding the tape and playing it again. Uh, so it's very much pop music back in the day, like. Um, and my first CD, then I'm ashamed to say, but oh, oh, I was young, you know, I was young. I was, I was a pop I was young. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, but it was a, a Steps single. I can't even remember the name of the song, but it was. Oh, it's not the coolest thing in the world, is it? Um, Somewhere along the line, when you were being in, uh, having all this music going on, different types of music, you picked up instruments. And what were the first instruments that you gravitated towards? Uh, the first, well, the first ever instrument I played was um, in school. You're, they give you a tin whistle, so that was the first ever instrument I played. I was, <clears throat> I can't say I fell in love with it. Um, I was, I was terrible. Um, but the first instrument that I wanted to play was a guitar. And I remember I, for my, my 13th birthday, I bought electric guitar and a little amp. And it was just this big noisy thing in my little room. I didn't really know how to play it. So I got guitar lessons for a couple of years off a local guy called Rob Lowther and he kind of showed me the ropes. Um, and I got an acoustic guitar. Um, and then I kind of put it away for a couple of years because I, I, I was still, I, I got a couple of lessons, but I still felt like I was useless. I couldn't read, really do anything. <laughs> Do you not think though that because you weren't you were a jack of all trades and you could you could do you could do the singing you could do the writing you could do a bit of guitar a bit a bit of piano a bit of drums that that made you more versatile you for the the career that you've had? Uh, I suppose it's definitely helped in, in terms of the writing process. Um, in terms of the live gigging, like I've really had to kind of zone in on doing what I so like what we play like. I'm not the like I say I'm not the best musician in the world, but what we play is pretty pretty standard. But I suppose the song behind it is what's is what's what's special about it. Song lyrics come to you at strange times. 
Yeah, they do. Yeah, like usually it's when things are peaceful, like when things are quiet. You might be sitting in front of the fire or just lying down to go to bed and then you'll get a, a wave and you'll, you'll open your phone, you'll either sing a melody in your phone or you'll write down some lyric in your notes. Um, sometimes you might be in the shop and you'll pause and you'll sing it. I hope no one's looking to think you're an absolute freak. We just whistle something to the phone or whatever. And uh, for yourself, looking back over the journey over the last decade, which has transformed your life, what has been some of the highlights? Like, what would you say has been like that moment when you think, damn, I, I've arrived. Like, this is, I'm living the dream. Was there one moment or was there a few moments? We always hoped and we always worked hard, but it was like, we were so far from, from where we wanted to be, like, back then. That was, like, almost impossible to see. What, what was going to happen? Um, so I think when we when we got the three arena sold out and played the show, and then at the last the last few moments of it, so we were just standing there with one more song to play, and the crowd just kind of stood up and just started clapping for like a minute or two, and it was just one of those moments that like every every oh my, it was just tingles all over, and it was just it was like okay, I I, I fucking did it. <laughs> yeah, well, for us, it's all about um, releasing music. Like, um, we have a couple of singles ready to go now in the next couple of months. And I think it's all about building up the, the stature of the band over the next year. Um, like it took us a good while to get our second album together so a lot of people kind of forgot about us uh, for the first album and when we came back then our sound had changed a little bit and I suppose looking back at that second album there was a couple of songs on that record that I, I felt were singles and were going to be singles but once the album dropped everybody had them and they weren't singles anymore so yeah I think a year of releasing singles and then hopefully an album at the end of that at some stage That's fantastic and what advice do you have for people out there who, who, who want to be the next Patrick Sheehy's or Hosier's or Dermot McKenzie's? What, what words of advice do you have for them? Um, my advice would be to do what you want to do. Trust your gut um, and put the head down and write some fucking great songs.